The prophecy of Fontaine will come true. It is inevitable. But this video is about the why more than the how. Before we get into it, this video will go over most of the lore in Genshin, so spoilers for everything. But also, there will be a lot of speculation. I will try my best to explain all my thoughts, but we will need time and an open mind. Let's begin on a journey through the fall of the kingdoms in Teyvat, and why that foreshadows the future that awaits Fontaine. Among the fallen kingdoms of Teyvat that we know of is Salvin Dagnir, Remoria, but also Kandria. Now the reason I mention these together is because they have something more in common than the fact that they got destroyed. There is a pattern here. To start off, Salvin Dagnir was a kingdom that had a large white tree which was connected to the Ermensol, and the princess born under it received the blessing to see the future. This princess would depict the pictures she foresaw in frescoes. One day, she had a prophetic dream about a black dragon that blotted down the sun and knew it to be an omen of doom. Now we do know who this dark dragon is and when it arrived in Dragonspine, but the princess did not know this. To make matters worse, after this dream she had, a certain amount of time had passed and a celestial nail dropped. The nail caused the snowstorms to persist. The princess had a friend from another kingdom called Imenlocker, who decided to find a way to save the nation, but he could not do it. The nail destroyed the tree that had blessed the princess, but the princess kept on working on her frescoes, and her father hoped that if she drew a fresco of the snow thawing, all would be well, because that would be the future that she saw. But something unusual happened. It had been so long since the princess saw the blue sky or the green grass that she forgot what those things looked like and couldn't complete the picture her father wanted from her. By the way, they tried to revive the tree as well, but that didn't work out either. The princess and her dad eventually died, leaving the scribe to be the last one to pass, who cursed the heavens and Imenlocker who failed. But the last words of the scribe predicted the rise of a kingdom with no gods, which we now know is Kandria. Also, the prophecy of the black dragon did come true many years later, when the dragon Durin was wreaking havoc. So the prophecy the princess saw did come true, even if it wasn't in her time. Now, the much more recent kingdom we've learnt of is Remoria. The first era of this kingdom was a peaceful time. People did not need laws or authorities. It also was the time when heavenly envoys walked the earth. It is important to note that according to the murals in Dragonspine, these heavenly envoys did walk among the people back then too. Apparently, this time in Remoria lasted for a while before people got bored of eternity. They desired things never promised to them by the Divine and tried to break free from their fate. And they were punished for it by unending rains, which caused the civilization to end. Later, King Remus apparently descended upon Merope in his golden fortuna. Yeah, that, that's the line. He spread art and music, and there was prosperity once again, until there was, guess what, another prophecy which said, this kingdom will face the most utter destruction. This is Fortuna. Post this, the god king derived the primordial plan for a seven-day rotation and hoped that if all the cities echoed with his songs, all would be well, and that he could escape this fate. Now, the end of this kingdom did happen, but it happened because of Remus trying to avoid the prophecy. He decided to mix the primordial water that created all beings with an immortal stone to create an icor which would contain the souls and minds of his people. He would go on to put this icor into golems and try to replace the entire primordial sea with this golden icor. His plans didn't end up working out because not only was he unable to save his people, he ended up getting swept away by an inexorable storm. This event is also alternatively described as both Remus and his people sinking into the black abyss, and this being a reminder of the inescapable cycle of this world. Side note, while the Nuts Syncrates Institute was more of a recent group and not one of Teyvat's ancient civilizations, they too saw a prophecy that predicted the destruction of the world and in order to prevent that, René was planning to create a giant oceanid after dissolving all of the people of Fontaine to avoid the prophecy. He even ended up dissolving the director of the institute and combining himself with his remains and turning into an oceanid called the Master. But this plan didn't work out in their favour because they were not able to reverse the prophecy and were defeated. Now, the fall of these kingdoms seemed to be part of an inevitable cycle, which clearly the people or the kings have not been able to escape. 
but the steps are the same people have prosperity suddenly there is a prophecy and then they start looking for ways to avoid it which is what leads them to their ends while some of these prophecies do not come true in their time the ruin of these kingdoms is somehow always a self-fulfilling prophecy uh let me explain in the case of the princess of salvantagnia the prophecy that she was scared of was not even from her time but one could say that it could have been if not for their desperate measures to escape it sure the celestial nails caused the kingdom to change and the coal left the lands uninhabitable but the princess didn't just die from that she died trying to graft the tree why was she trying to revive it because it was the reason that she had these powers of seeing the future she literally dies next to the tree because of sheer cold even a malocker died because he was looking to save this kingdom and went above and beyond but wasn't able to return also there is more to why the nail even fell there in the first place but we'll get to that in a bit in remuria the prophecy is what pushed remus to madness he was so obsessed with protecting the kingdom that he lost sight of the methods he was using not to mention he even realizes this at the very end but it's too late by then Also both these kingdoms have the mention of divine envoys from the heavens who did come down to earth to share their blessings and knowledge but eventually humans tried to break away from their faiths or try to learn the forbidden and then the heavens and the envoys were unhappy with them this time when there was endless prosperity and a certain level of interaction between the heavens and man is described in the silver tiaras of the prayers of destiny artifact set and guess what happens in those stories as well Humans in their uncertainty about the future of this prosperity decide to delve into the depths of the world and eventually only their silver tiaras is what is left of them also all these tiaras talk about a silver tree which is well we know what that is even king deshit's kingdom was no different he was warned by the goddess of flowers to not seek forbidden knowledge but she helped him find it and we all know what happened to him What I'm seeing is this pattern of prophecy leading to disaster is too recurrent for it to be a coincidence. Rene rightly points out that the rise and fall of these kingdoms is the fortuna or their fate, which makes sure there are civilizations that rise out of the ashes of the kingdoms that fell before. But I believe that all this isn't cyclical, but preordained. Now to explain what I just said, I will have to get into some concepts that may have inspired Genshin's story. but mostly to make sense of what exactly happens to the people of Tevat beyond this is very very speculative i don't claim that this is right or even makes sense so please keep that in mind if you look at the domain mural in most of the domains it bears a resemblance to the emerald tablet which is a text that is said to contain the secret of the universe alchemy and even the creation of the philosopher's stone a line that resonates whenever the emerald tablet is brought up is as above so below which could explain why the domain mural is mirrored now the emerald tablet is attributed to hermes trismegistus who was a religious figure believed to be the combination of the greek god hermes and the egyptian god thoth many texts are credited to this figure which are known as the hermetica the emerald tablet being one of them which many alchemists believe to be the foundation of alchemy Among the many texts there is one called the fall of man. To summarize this text, it talks about how when God created the universe, he made gods and goddesses who he assigned to certain paths. But he also then took a mysterious transparent substance and created human souls. These souls were assigned to the astral region, which was just above the physical region. These souls would then be tasked with creating the several forms of life on earth. he handed some of the mysterious creative substance to the souls and asked them to make more life but the souls would eventually want more wanting to possess power similar to the god that created them overstepping the boundaries that god had set for them hoping to be powerful as that god god was unhappy with them and decided to call upon hermes to create physical bodies to trap these souls and promise that suffering would await them in the physical world If their actions were worthy of forgiveness they could rescind back to the heavenly realm but until they improved themselves they would be condemned to repeated reincarnation upon earth Now I don't think this is exactly what is happening in Tevat but there is something here that struck me as at least similar to what we've seen in the world of Genshin Firstly the reincarnation part kind of fits considering the cyclical rise and fall of these kingdoms not to mention the memories of the people always exists in a repository 
which is Amensol. When people die, it is mentioned that they return to the ley lines, which again contains memories. Also speculation, but when I think of the princess of Salvantagno being able to see the future, it is connected to the giant tree, which we know is connected to the Amensol. That is where she received her powers to be able to see the future. And when the nails fell, she lost this power. While this is not said explicitly, if you recall, she didn't remember what the sky and the grass looked like. One might say that it was because of the never-ending snow that the nails caused, but I think she simply lost her memory, which we know had some connection to the Ermansol. What if the Ermansol was just showing her memories from another time, but the prophecy did come true, so it was the future, right? I think a little differently about this, but before that, in the fall of man, the souls were sent to create in the place of God. It feels similar to the divine envoys who shared knowledge with man, who eventually fell out of favour with the primordial one because perhaps they shared too much. Also, if creation is what makes you similar or closer to the power of God, is that perhaps the arrogation of mankind? We know Rhine Daughter or Gold has been called the sinner, but she created several beings across Devat. She might have created Elinus too, but Albedo would be her greatest creation, because she managed to create a person even the project was called the Primordial Human Project. Was Rhine Daughter, through all her creations, trying to become God? And this isn't just Rhine Daughter though. Remus created golems, Rene created an ocean in it. Is the creation of life the arrogation of mankind? Coming back to the Ermansol, the concept of sending a higher being to a world to create, eventually resulting in descent and punishment through reincarnation. Couldn't this have happened more than once? What if the primordial one forces this world to repeat its fate over and over again until they realize their errors, improve and finally ascend? The reason the princess could see the future was because it was simply the unchanging fate that she could see through her connection to the Ermansol. And this fate is unchanging because humans continue to repeat their actions. Couldn't Fortuna just be this, a fate that is predetermined unless a variable changes it? Couldn't the future that we saw through the book of Esoteric Revelation just be the failed civilizations that could not escape their punishment? That's it for my very speculative analysis of the kingdoms of Tevat and Fontaine's prophecy. Let me know your own thoughts and theories in the comment section below. If you wish to speak to me about lore or anything Genshin related, I stream at twitch.tv forward slash pixiebub. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.